each and every one of you. Before I start the sermon, I would like to wish you all a happy and safe 4th of July. I would like to thank all of the men and women, past and present, who served, are serving, and sacrificed their lives and are sacrificing themselves to keep myself and all of America from our enemies safe. May our Heavenly Father continue to bless you and keep you safe. Know you are loved and prayed for. Those of you who are serving overseas, I pray you come home safe and quickly, as does the rest of this beautiful country. God bless each and every one of you. God loves us more than we know, comprehend, imagine, or even understand the immense of his love for each of us, you included, is beyond human understanding. That true love, ultimate love, is in the fact that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us, to be the atonement for our sins, to pay a debt we could not pay nor ever pay. With his blood we are cleansed, our sins forgiven, washed away. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. This comes from the King James Version Bible, 1 John 4.10. And what John is saying here is that, before I go over this, we want to look at one key word and it's propitiation which is the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person the act of propitius in theology the atonement or atoning sacrifice to god to assuance to his wrath and render him propitius to sinners christ is the propitiation for the sins of men you can look further on this in Romans 3 or 1 John 2. Now as we continue in the verse I just went over, John explains this is who God really is, love. True, ultimate, no hidden motives, no hidden agenda. He asks Jesus to die for you, for me, so that through him we may be reconciled with the Father. Please share this sermon with others. Like you, they too can hear the message. Today's sermon is really important because I'm going to talk about Christ's return. Will Jesus come back? Yes, he will. That's the promise he made to each of us. Will he reward us according to our deeds? Those motives of our deeds, the motives we have in our heart. Yes, he will. Jesus our Lord and Savior always makes good on what he promises and what he tells us. Why? Because he is the Word and was with his Father from the very beginning. He is the truth, the way, and the life. When will he return? Nobody knows. But Jesus tells us to be prepared, but also not to worry, to live life. To truly live life and be happy because he knows the plans he has for us and behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be Revelation King James 22 12 Jesus is saying himself personally to each of us I'm coming and will be there soon. My rewards for you are with me. And each will be paid back accordingly to his work, his motives, his thoughts, his deeds. When Jesus spoke to his disciples before his ascension to his heavenly Father, he told them that he was going to prepare a place for each of them. And if he, that if he was going to prepare that place, and they can be assured he was going to be coming back for them. 
but you see, Jesus didn't only mean that for them, his disciples. In his word, he meant it for each and every one of us, all his children that his father had given him, whom nobody can snatch away, who believe in him, who trust in him, who know and believe that he will make good on his word. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. King James Version, 1 John 14, 2 through 3. Now, what is Jesus telling us that he told John and to let all of us know that in his father's house are many mansions. Now, are they physical homes, physical mansions? I don't know. That I can't say. But each of us, what Jesus is saying, has a place in heaven for those of us who endure and who believe in him, therefore believing in God. And if he's preparing that place for us, that we are written in his book of life, and he known that from the foundation of the world, then we can be assured that if he's gone there to prepare for us that place, our special place in heaven, then he's going to come again and receive us upon himself. So where he is, we may be. And when we're in heaven, we're in God's presence. And we're in Jesus' presence. See, Jesus is omnipresent like his Father. He's all over at the same time. So in heaven, he's with each of us for eternity, as the Father is. So we may be there with him, and living in not only his presence, but our Heavenly Father's presence. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Revelation 1, 7, King James. What's it saying here? That Jesus is not coming back to be born again as a child as he once did. He's coming back as our Lord and Savior, as our King, as the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. And he will make sure that everyone, not one person will miss it, dead or alive, shall see him and acknowledge him as the Son of the living God who sits at the right hand of the Father, who is given authority by our Heavenly Father to rule as the heir over heaven and earth and all of creation. And he will make sure our enemies see him. That's what it says here. And they also which pierced him, not only the soldier who pierced him when he died on the cross, but all those who pierced him with their words their actions, and their denial of him. When you deny Christ, you pierce him, you hurt him. And when he comes back, everyone, past, present, and future, will see him. And we will bow down and acknowledge him. Moving on in the sermon, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. This comes from Mark 13, 22, King James. And what's Jesus telling us here? That he is the Son of the living God. And he doesn't even know the hour of his return. Only the Father. The angels in heaven don't know. Now, to break this down even more and further so we can understand it better, what Jesus is saying is that if I, who was given full authority in heaven and earth, and, uh, and is the heir to the kingdom of heaven, rule with my Father, who sits at the right hand of God, stands at the right hand of power, if he is saying, Jesus, who is the Word, 
and was with the Father from the beginning, and was begotten by the Father, that he doesn't know, then how can man know? How can woman know? We can't. So don't believe the false prophets for a man. Don't believe Lucifer. Don't believe that Lucifer's son, the Antichrist. Don't believe anyone that says they know the hour, the day, and the time that Christ will return. Because it's written right here. And Jesus has given us his promise that he doesn't even know. And the angels don't know. This is something that is strictly the fathers and the fathers alone to know when his return will be. But he doesn't want you to be paranoid, as I discussed before. He doesn't want you to be anxious. He doesn't want you to be worried. He wants you to be prepared. But live life the way he teaches us to live life. Live life the way he lived when he was here on earth in his 33 years, and his three years during his ministry. Live the way he expects us to, so we can be called his children, his disciples, his followers. So the question is, what do we do in the meantime? You obey Jesus as God instructed us. You live life to the fullest. You don't worry about what others say about you or your reputation with them. You worry about your reputation with Jesus. Remember, he's the only one who has the authority given to him by his Father, our Heavenly Father, to let us into heaven or tell us we cannot go into heaven. To tell us we passed or tell us we failed. To tell us, well done, faithful servant. Or tell us, I never knew you. So, in my testimony, I would say, <coughs> worry about your reputation with him. And worry, I don't mean be paranoid. Focus on your reputation. Don't worry about what other people say, what other people do. Because people are going to talk good about you, and they're going to talk bad about you like they talk good about me, and like they talk bad about me. And the more godly you are, the more Satan's going to use them to attack you, to get you to turn from God. When I say worry, I mean obey Jesus. And for every struggle that's in your way, Jesus will show you a way to get out of it. He's with you every step of the way because he loves you. He's your Lord. He wants to take you home with him to be in eternity and live in eternity with him, to walk the streets of gold with him, to talk with him, to get to know him more because we'll have eternity to get to know him. He wants you to repent your sins. That's what I mean about worry. He wants you to remember who he is and his position in the deity. Allow him to be your example on how you live, on how you speak, and how you conduct yourself in the various situations that life throws at us. Focus on love not hate. Focus on forgiveness, not revenge. Peace, not turmoil. Joy, not sadness. Don't worry or be anxious. Be prepared. Know in your heart, in your soul, that Jesus will make good on his promise. Trust him. Love him. Believe in him know that all will be judged, each of us, evil and non-evil. And we all will be rewarded when we meet him in the sky, and we will see him face to face. We will be with him for eternity from that time on, for those who have accepted him as their Lord and Savior, and accepted him as the Son of the living God, who believe in him and fully trust in him. We, you, will be saved because you are loved. Each of you are loved. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I'm Reverend Tony. Thank you for joining me today as I went live with another sermon. 
And this one again, I'm going to ask you to please share it with others. Because it's about Christ's return. And he will return. It's about Christ telling us to be prepared and to show love, to show mercy, to show grace, to show each other forgiveness. As he forgives us, as he intercedes on our behalf to the Father and asks the Father to forgive us, to ask the Father to show us mercy, to show us grace. We too must do the same if we wish the same in return. Please continue to walk in the presence of God. We'll see you again next time as I go live with another sermon. Enjoy the rest of your 4th of July. Enjoy your barbecue. Enjoy each other. Spread the love. Spread the peace. Spread the forgiveness. And I pray that the Lord, our Heavenly Father, continues to pour out His blessings upon you and yours from the windows of heaven. Please keep each of them, the Father and the Son, in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. He's your friend. Please continue to walk in the presence of God.